hello students um so in the previous class we saw um the techniques to te uh, check the stability of a given system and uh, we also learned that if uh, we have a nonlinear system uh, then in that case how we do the linearization and uh, from there we check the stability around the equilibrium points or stationary points and then we draw the conclusion that whether the original system um, is stable or not but sometimes uh, this linearization may not be possible and uh, we may not be able to get the uh, stability via this linearization method so then there is uh, another technique that is called as uh, uh, Lyapunov uh, functions so with the help of which uh, we can uh, test whether a given uh, ODE uh, 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 system of ODEs is stable or not. So, uh, today's class and maybe the next class we will look into the uh, stability via Lyapunov functions and uh, we will see how it works actually right. So, basically um, suppose uh, uh, so we, we first introduce some definitions. So, let uh, x uh, be the solution be the solution of the autonomous system autonomous uh, system x dot is equals to f of x or we can also take vectors or a system of equation that is also fine and uh, v of uh, x is a uh, scalar a scalar uh, differentiable differentiable uh, function so this is uh, kind of like a recapitulation so we started with the definition and uh, some properties of uh, lipuna function so this in this class we cover it in detail so, basically uh, we also assume that V is a scalar differentiable function uh, defined on the phase space then the total derivative uh, total derivative or sometimes it is also called as orbital derivative or uh, orbital derivative derivative of this vx is defined by so how do we define the derivative of vx is defined by um, d of so we use uh, this kind of notation so d of uh, vx is defined by uh, d d t of v x. Now, we keep in mind that uh, v is scalar, but it is uh, functions of x 1, x 2, x 3 up to uh, x n. So, this will become uh, d v by d x into d x d t, which is uh, d x d t equals to f we can replace. So, d v by d x into f of x right. So, here d v by d x is the gradient basically is the gradient of v right. And um, so, for 2 by 2 system we can easily verify this. So, v is a function of x 1 and x 2. So, in that case uh, if we do the time derivative then it will be del v by uh, so this will be um, d v um, uh, in a way uh, it will happen in terms of a partial derivative. So, if we can write uh, del v by del x 1 then uh, del x 1 del t plus uh, del v by del x 2 into del x 2 del t then we can write as a gradient of v times uh, d x 1 d x 2 right. So, from there we can uh, see this that this formula is turning out to be the uh, the, the product I mean the dot product of the gradient of v with respect to x and uh, into the function uh, f of x. So, this is a kind of like uh, this v act as a uh, 
function that uh, we multiply uh, to our original system of equations to get the stability right. So, we will see how we are motivating uh, the idea of Lyapunov function using this uh, capital V. So, um, and uh, of course, you can write uh, here uh, comma here this and this dot is the inner product or dot product is the inner product right. Um, so, basically this equation let us call this as equation 2 and this one was our equation 1. So, equation 2 equation 2 indicates indicates that the time derivative that the time derivative of v along the solution along the solution of 1 the time derivative of uh, v along the solution of 1 uh, is given by is given by the projection of projection of gradient of v on the vector field or on the right hand side on the right hand side right hand side f this is kind of like a projection definition. So, basically the derivative of v along the solution of 1 is nothing but the projection of gradient of uh, v uh, on the right hand side f right ok. Now, uh, let me introduce one or two more definitions. So, basically uh, definition 1, the first definition is a function v x is positive uh, semi definite or simply positive definite around the origin uh, if a neighborhood D uh, of the origin uh, exists such that such that Vx is differentiable on D. Second criteria is V at 0 equals to 0 and third criteria is Vx is positive uh, definite or v x the scalar quantity is greater equal to 0 that is positive semi definite positive semi uh, definite for all um, x belonging to d and x not equals to 0. So, function v this uh, scalar function v is called as positive definite or simply positive semi definite around the origin if uh, a neighborhood D of origin exists such that V x is differentiable on D and V at 0 equals to 0 and third condition is V x is positive. So, that is for the positive definite criteria and V x is greater equal to 0 that is for the positive semi definite criteria very straightforward condition it has to be differentiable and at origin the function has needs to vanish and uh, if it is strictly positive for all the other points then we call this function v as positive uh, definite and if it is greater or equal to 0 then we call it as positive semi definite right similarly we can define for uh, negative definite or negative semi definite that means v x will be differentiable on d v at 0 equals to 0 if v x is strictly less than 0 then we have negative definite and if v x is lesser or equal to 0 then we have negative semi definite um, uh, for basically uh, uh, 
for all x in D and uh, then we call the function V as uh, negative semi definite or negative definite uh, function. Now, uh, second definition. So, V x, so this v, as I was telling you that we motivate the idea of Lyapunov function using this V and how this V will help to test the stability that is coming later. So, V x is called, you can put a vector sign, is called a Lyapunov function for a vector field f which uh, has the origin um, as a stationary point as a stationary point if a bounded neighborhood if a bounded neighborhood NBD uh, D of uh, origin exists such that such that first criteria is Vx is positive definite on D and the derivative D of Vx is negative semi definite on D right. So, Vx is called the Lyapunov function for a vector field f which has uh, the origin as the stationary point. So, f basically if you do f x equals to 0. So, the stationary points uh, that you will end up getting as origin. So, if a bounded neighborhood d. So, a bounded neighborhood d of the origin exists such that v is positive definite and the de derivative of uh, v is negative semi definite on this interval uh, on this neighborhood d. So, then it is called as Lyapunov function and uh, it is called as uh, strongly I mean let me just extend this definition. Um, third definition is uh, V x is called strong Lyapunov function is called is a strong Lyapunov function if in the previous definition 1 holds and uh, 2 is replaced by this 2 d of f v x is negative definite on D right. Okay. So, basically uh, you can uh, relate these things uh, to more or less maximum minima time kind of condition that uh, the derivative of the function is 0 and then we check whether the first order uh, second order derivative is positive or negative. So, from there we say that the function attains uh, local maxima, local minima or global maxima, um, global minimum. So, basically this uh, second uh, the strong Lyapunov function uh, suggests that it does not have any local maxima or minima. The existence of Lyapunov function um, actually makes it possible to show the stability basically. So, we can show that if there is a Lyapunov function then how we can connect uh, this uh, Lyapunov function B to the stability of the solution. So, first we uh, have to make sure that there exists a Lyapunov function and then comes the stability question right. Um, so, there is a little theorem that actually tells us uh, that uh, the origin 
the origin is a stable uh, stationary point of the autonomous system 1 that I wrote just now. Um, if a Lyapunov function uh, if uh, a Lyapunov function uh, for the vector field f exists. So, that means uh, the origin uh, basically when we are doing uh, dx dt equals to f from there we get the stationary points. So, stationary uh, the origin it will be a stable stationary point uh, of the system if there exists Lyapunov function for the right hand side that means uh, that we can find this v x which satisfies the definition 2 or definition 3 and uh, then in that case we can say that this origin is actually a um, stable uh, uh, stationary point. So, here um, I can uh, try to prove this result. So, the proof is not uh, that long. So, this because this is one of the vital uh, results. So, suppose for a ball, so we consider a small ball around the origin. So, for a ball around the origin, around the origin we denote what do how do we denote so b of epsilon is equals to all such x such that norm of x is less than epsilon strictly less than epsilon and uh, um, for a sphere for a sphere s epsilon for a sphere s epsilon we write all such x such that norm of x is equals to epsilon right. So, for a ball around the origin we use the notation uh, b epsilon as uh, all such x such that norm of x is less than epsilon and for a sphere we denote the notation s epsilon equals to this ok. Now, um, from the definition 2 basically. So, from the def, uh, from the stability point of view we have to show that uh, from the stability point of view point of view we have to show that we have to show that for any epsilon positive a delta epsilon exists such that such that all solutions all solutions uh, starting within B delta uh, remains in B epsilon for t greater or equal to t 0. This is the stability criteria that we are saying na, that if you start with the solution uh, at x 0 then the solution will always stay within the neighborhood around the point x 0. So, here from that perspective uh, and uh, if we want to test the stability then we just have to take a solution. Uh, so, for any epsilon positive there exists a delta positive such that um, the solution starting within the ball B delta will always remain in the ball B epsilon for all t get or equal to t 0 right ok. So, first uh, so, first we take uh, the largest take the largest epsilon 0 positive such that B epsilon 0 and S epsilon 0 are fully contained 
in D. All right, and uh, we show that we show that um, delta epsilon exists, and we show that delta epsilon exists for all epsilon less than or equal to epsilon zero. Right. Okay. So uh, the minimum, the minimum of Lyapunov function v on s epsilon zero is denoted by v minimum. So, we denote it by v minimum which is minimum of all such x in s epsilon 0 v of x right. So, that is the minimum. So, because v is positive definite, v is positive definite, we have v minimum always greater than 0. So, because uh, v x will be positive for all x. So, obviously, v minimum uh, that is the minimum value of all such v x uh, over uh, where x belongs to s of epsilon. Obviously, v minimum uh, minimum will be positive and uh, next we consider the subset we consider the subset consider the subset of v epsilon 0 at which v is smaller than v minimum all right so let us consider a subset uh, subset uh, of v epsilon 0 uh, uh, at which this v the Lyapunov function is smaller than v minimum. So, we are denoting it by d of epsilon 0 is equals to all such x such that x belongs to v epsilon 0 and uh, v x is less than v minimum. So, solution starting in so basically the solutions uh, which are starting in d epsilon 0 cannot leave it cannot leave it because the value of v the value of v cannot increase along the solutions right. So, because v is less than v minimum. So, therefore, the solution that is starting in d epsilon 0 cannot leave this right. So, the all those x which are in d epsilon 0 they will stay in d epsilon 0 because our v is bounded by v minimum. So, if it is bounded by v minimum then the v cannot increase any further. So, therefore, the solution will always remain in d epsilon 0 and uh, due to and uh, due to the fact and due to the fact that the total derivative total derivative of v is semi definite semi definite which is v of x at t is equals to v of x at t 0 so it's integral from t 0 to t d f v of x comma eh, v of x s d of s which is less than or equal to v of x at t 0 right. So, from here uh, because v at 0 
since it is a Lyapunov function, so v at 0 equals to 0, the origin is in d epsilon 0, the origin is in d epsilon 0 and uh, due to the continuity of v x, we can find a delta epsilon 0 such that such that b delta epsilon 0 is always contained in d epsilon 0. So, basically So, basically um, we have assumed uh, uh, epsilon greater than epsilon 0 and uh, we arrived at this conclusion and the same argument, the same argument arguments apply for all epsilon less than epsilon 0. So, for epsilon greater than epsilon 0, we can take delta epsilon equals to delta epsilon 0 and therefore, any solution that starts in this um, where is that. So, basically any solution that starts uh, in B delta will always remain uh, in B epsilon and therefore, the solution is not becoming unstable because it is staying in the neighborhood of that uh, that ball that we have considered around the stationary point right. So, this shows that uh, if origin at all becomes uh, a stable point, if the origin is a stable point or a stable stationary point. So, then in that case there will always exist a Lyapunov function and uh, that Lyapunov function actually can be uh, given by v x equals to that uh, I mean um, we, we, we see how we can calculate it, but uh, d uh, its derivative can be calculated by that d of uh, v x equals to d x d t times uh, f of um, x and uh, from there we can basically use the positive definite or uh, negative definite uh, definitions to prove this uh, particular result. Um, for asymptotic uh, stability, uh, we can motivate the similar results. So, we said that origin is stable a stationary point if there exists a Lyapunov function. We can also uh, say that origin is an asymptotically stable stationary point if uh, there exists a strong Lyapunov function. So, the similar argument can be applied to uh, this theorem. So, the origin, the origin um, is an asymptotically asymptotically uh, stable stationary point stationary point of the original autonomous system 1 if a strong Lyapunov function um, function for for f exists right so if it is just stable then we'll have a lyapunov function if it is uh, asymptotically stable then we have a strong lyapunov function right the idea is same uh, to prove the result um, all right Next, um, um, so proof is left to the reader. So proof, uh, proof is left to the students or audience. You can try to prove another similar arguments. So, this these are the few theorems or uh, definitions and few theorems where we can see that if we talk about stability or asymptotic stability, then we will have a Lyapunov function 
uh, or there exists always a Lapunov function and uh, we also proved at least uh, the first theorem. The second theorem goes in the analogous way with some obvious modifications, right. So, we, I will try to show you one example in the next class uh, where we see how we can implement this uh, um, idea of Lapunov function and how we can calculate the Lapunov function and uh, we will work out one example to um, give you the idea of this uh, abstract things that we covered in this class all right so i will stop here today and uh, we will continue our discussion in the next class thank you